Hi everyone, so today we're going to read the book Keith Haring, The Boy Who Just Kept Drawing by K.A. Haring. And believe it or not, K is Keith Haring's sister. And this book is illustrated by Robert Newbecker. There was a boy named Keith. When he was little, his father taught him how to draw dogs and fish and funny things. His dad would draw a line. Then Keith would draw one too. Soon, the whole page would be full. From that time on, Keith never stopped drawing. In elementary school, while taking tests, Keith doodled on the edge of his paper. When he handed in his work, his teachers would ask, Why did you doodle on this important paper? Keith didn't answer. He went back to his desk and he just kept drawing. Sometimes Keith invited his friends to draw in his backyard clubhouse. Keith made symbols and said each one represented a letter of the alphabet. His friends asked, why do you use symbols to write? Keith drew more symbols. It was his way of answering their question. He encouraged his friends to join him. As a teenager, Keith liked to draw in his bedroom with music playing loud. He would draw on every piece of paper he could find. His mother had to yell over the mu music. Why can't you turn that music down and go outside for a bike ride? But Keith had sold his bike to buy art supplies, so he answered, Look at the cool drawings I did. And he just kept drawing. When Keith was in high school, he won first prize for his art. A successful couple from town offered to buy his drawing. Keith said, No, thank you. If you enjoy my art, you may hang it on your wall, no charge. Keith's sisters were shocked. Why didn't you take the money, they asked. Keith shrugged. He just wanted to keep drawing. Keith graduated from high school and went to the big city of Pittsburgh to, do, to a school that would teach him about art. There were boys on the street trying something new, breakdancing. He liked the crazy shapes of their bodies as they turned and flipped on the ground. While the music played loud, Keith started drawing wiggly lines. His teachers asked him, why are you drawing pictures that look like scrambled bodies? This is not what I told you to draw. Keith knew how to draw. He just wanted to draw in different ways, and he kept drawing. Keith moved to the huge city of New York when he was 20, so he could draw with other artists. He started to draw all over the city on walls, on sidewalks, and on paper that he hung on lampposts. His drawings were washed away by the rain or torn down by street cleaners. Other art artists asked Keith, why do you draw in places your pictures could be erased? Keith didn't hear them. He was searching for another wall so he could keep drawing. Keith got a job delivering packages and sometimes rode the subway. One day, he saw a panel of black paper on the wall on a station. He rushed outside to buy chalk and came back in and began to draw. The white chalk made bright, smooth lines on the black paper. Day after day, Keith filled the empty panels in the subway stations with art. Soon, people who rode the subway were looking for the white chalk drawings. No one knew the name of the artist, but his drawings were easy to recognize. People asked him, Why are you drawing here? What do your pictures mean? Keith said, what do you see? You decide what they mean. Where Keith lived, there was trash on the street and people didn't always say hello to each other. One day, he and his friends cleaned up 20 bags of garbage in front of the long wall. Then, Keith painted square faces with smiles and body shapes dancing upside down. The neighbors liked the drawings and stopped to say thank you. A policeman came by and lectured Keith. Why did you do this? I have to give you a ticket because you didn't get permission. Keith paid the fine and just kept drawing. Some people wanted to see more of Keith's drawings, and he was asked to display his work in an art gallery. Art was hung from floor to ceiling, and in between, he painted on the walls. Keith invited everyone to come and enjoy his work. All of Keith's artwork sold. The gallery owner asked him, What are you going to do with all of this money? Keith said, I read in the newspaper that there are kids who don't have enough to eat. I didn't have this money yesterday, and I was happy. If I don't have it tomorrow, I'll still be happy. 
All children need to eat. I'll send the money to them. The gallery owner gasped. Why? Keith just smiled and started to draw again. Now people were inviting Keith to draw in famous museums and exhibit in galleries all over the world. He was proud that he had become a successful artist. But wherever he went, Keith insisted he paint a mural so everyone could enjoy his work, not just the people who had money to buy it. During a visit to Paris, France, Keith painted on the outside of a children's hospital, six stories high. Newspaper reporters came to take pictures and asked, why did you paint at the hospital? Do you think that it will make the sick children feel better? Keith didn't have time to answer. He had to finish painting. When the Statue of Liberty was 100 years old, Keith drew an outline of the famous statue on a huge piece of vinyl fabric. Then he asked 900 kids to help him finish the drawing. Keith told them, draw anything, whatever you want. No one can say it's bad or good because it's yours. When the giant painting was displayed, people were amazed to see what Keith and the kids had made. But the art critics couldn't understand why a famous artist was drawing with kids. But you know Keith, he just kept drawing. Keith painted all over the world. He would draw anything, anytime, anywhere. Wherever he went and whatever he did, he would not stop. He just kept drawing. Now everyone wanted to know, and together they shouted, Why? Why do you draw all the time? Why do you give your artwork away? Why do you draw on buildings, on people, on clothing, on furniture, on subway walls, on cars, on skateboards, on walls that belong to no one? and on things to be thrown away. Why do you draw on everything? Keith stopped drawing just for a moment and answered, I draw all the time because there are many spaces to fill. I give my drawings away to help make the world a better place. I draw everywhere because everyone needs art. Then Keith turned back to the street, took a piece of chalk from his pocket, and just kept drawing. So although this was made for children and it was drawn almost in like an animation style, cartoon style, these stories and these different uh, things that Keith came across in this book are all true, th true things in the experience of his sister. All right, you guys ready to get these beauties colored in? I love so much everything that you guys were sending me last week. They really, really came out great. So the way we're going to color these in is by using complementary colors. Some of you may know or remember that we went on with this before and some others may have forgotten. Complementary colors sit across from each other on the color wheel and more importantly they are used for two reasons. First reason is to make the color brown. If you mix together any of these colors purple or yellow, red and green, and blue and orange you'll get a brown shade. The other reason is to use them because they are the highest form of contrast on the color wheel. So if you use purple against yellow, your images will stick out from one another. They'll pop out. So that's why we're going to use complementary colors in this drawing because Keith Haring's artworks were so brightly colored and they popped out from each other. He often used complementary colors in his artwork, in his colored artworks. Okay, so the colors that you choose for the figures are going to be the complement in the background. So don't worry about all the extra things that you have. It's just going to be the complements of the figure and the background. What I noticed that a lot of you guys didn't include was a ground, so I need you to also do that. The grounds do not count in this complementary part. Okay, so I'm gonna start coloring this in. I'm gonna use markers, but like we always say, you could use whatever you have at home. So once you've chosen the color of your figure, then your background you'll com be completing later um, with your complement. So be mindful of the colors that you're picking because your background is going to be uh, chosen be based on the color that you've chosen for your figure. Does that make sense? Okay, so I've gotten all my figures colored in. Like I said earlier, the little extras like the easel and the weights and my soccer ball and the music notes, those colors don't matter based on your complement. So you can color those any colors you want, as well as the grounds. You can color the grounds any colors that you want. 
Once we are finished with all that, we're going to choose our complements to our figures to do the background colors. All right, so here's how we're going to do this now. We got the backgrounds left, right? So I'm going to start with my red figure, and red's complement is green. So I'm going to color the entire background around this figure super, super slow because don't forget, complements equal brown. So if you mix one on top of the other, you're going to get some brown. So around your figure as solid as you can, do the whole background green. The same thing for the rest of your figures. Now you don't have to color, you don't have to use the same colors I did. You just have to choose the complements for the backgrounds. So I have attached the color wheel to the, to the assignment, so if you need to refer to it, you can. All right, and there you have it. I think what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to outline the boxes just so it doesn't look as sloppy. I got some of the markers on top of one another and um, then I'm going to be finished. So once you finish this, I'd like you to please take a picture and upload it to this assignment on the Google Classroom. Thanks so much for helping me celebrate my favorite artist's birthday. I hope you guys have a great week.